Indeed, 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 indeed. Pastor, happy new year to you. Thank you, same to you. Grace and peace unto you. Grace and peace. Amen. 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 Definitely. So another edition of Ask the Pastor. What's on your mind this evening? Mm. Uh, amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for another day that you've given us in the land of the living. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who make all this possible. Thank you for the victory in Jesus. It's victory in none other. Triumphant, victorious Jesus. Giving you in advance all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory, because all belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 and amen. So we give him the praise, we give him the honor, we give him the glory. So guys, the phone is open. A question you want to ask the pastor as it relates to the Bible. The Bible said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And, uh, you know, we shouldn't keep things inside and, you know, just have our own way about it. It's always good in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Let every word be established. If you have something that you don't truly understand about the Bible, get a second opinion. See what it's saying and see what the Lord is going to say to you. Amen. So the phone is open 347 663 8638. something here all right go ahead amen hallelujah this um first corinthians chapter 13 the apostle paul is writing to the believers at corinth he said everything that i receive i got by revelation of jesus christ first corinthians chapter 13 and look at that verse in verse 9 for we know in part and we prophesy in part but when that which is perfect is come that which is in part shall be done with it when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I taught as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So the Apostle Paul, who wrote most of the New Covenant, said, we know in part. We don't know it all. So nobody know it all. And one of the scriptures that we bring into the surface is from um, Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 2. And see what he's saying to us there. Proverbs 25, Solomon. And think about the people who wrote this. Give us this information. Proverbs chapter 25. Mm -hmm. And look at the second verse. Proverbs chapter 25. And verse 2. Mm -hmm. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but it is the honor of kings to search out a matter. So he concealed it, you search it out. I think that is very important. He put that there for us. <laughs> it is the glory of God to conceal it. And the honor of kings to search it out. So the Apostle Paul rightly saying, he know in part, in prophesy in part, he see through a glass, exactly, so nobody know it all. So we are learning day by day. We should never come approach the things that God have know it. We don't know it all. We're just learning it by day by day. Grace and peace, you're in the air. What's your question? Hello. Hello. Hi, my question is, I'm struggling with the day you're supposed to worship. Mm. Um, uh, I worship on Sundays. Mm. However, my daughter was raised with her dad, and they both worship on Saturdays. Mm. Now, my, quest, my, the, my thing is, she just finished college, mm. and she would not take a job that, has to, that she has to be flexible with or work on Saturdays, and I cannot continue to support her. <laughs> Uh, <coughs> so what do I do? I've been struggling with it and praying about it. Well, the best thing to go is to go to the Bible. When all is failed in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It was God, yes. In, the, in um, here in, in um, Romans chapter 14, if you have something to write with and something to write on, Romans chapter 14, look at the fifth verse. One man uh -huh. esteem one day above another, another man esteem all they are like, 
let every man be fully, put his, fully persuaded in his own mind. So you see, some people can think one day is better than another. Some could think it's all days alike. Now well, let me give you another scripture. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Look at the book of Galatians. We've been through this a while and Paul, because if he answering this question here, people was asking the same question back then about, you know, when should this be and when should be it. Galatians chapter 4. <coughs> and let's pick it about verse 8. Galatians chapter 4. And look at verse 8. How be it then, when you knew not God, you did serve unto them which by nature know God. But now after you have known of God, or rather you have known God, you turn again to weak and beggarly element, whereunto you desire to be in bondage. Look at verse 10. You observe days and months and times and years, I am afraid of you. They shall have bestowed upon labor in vain. That is two. Let me give you a third one, Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. On all these, remember Paul said, everything I receive, I got it by revelation of Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 2. <clears throat> and look at two verses. Mm -hmm. uh, 16 and 17. Colossians chapter 2. Look at verses 16 and 17. Let no man therefore judge you in meat and in drinks and respects yeah. of holy day or in new moon on the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the bodies of Christ. So that's all you could just give her the word of God and see that it penetrated there. I mean, we could serve God anywhere we want to. We should take a day to worship God, but if, I mean, it's not a big thing that you have to worship on a particular day. Every day could be exactly. a light to you. We are, we, are, we, are, we are children, we are ambassadors for the things of God. And I mean, you're not an ambassador just at one day. Maybe sometimes God could put you in a place to minister that you could be a light in dark place or be salt to add flavor in certain places. And we get all hung up in things like that. But when that opportunity come to serve the Lord, I mean, hey, you know, if we have to do something on a Sunday, do it. You know, if you had to do it on a Sabbath day, do it. What's the big deal? Look, he's, look at Rehab. Paul is writing this. He said, God, give it to him. Look at that one in Colossians 2 and verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drinks or in respects of holy days or in the new moon or in Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come, but the bodies of Christ. We know in the body of Christ and they still want to sometimes go back to the old covenant. These things are past. We wish we could read some more scripture. We want to give everybody just one opportunity to answer that and uh, we've been down that street and people ask this question all the time i know but because i have been studying the bible and i did get Colossians chapter 2 what you read in there and i gave it to her but i guess it's so like embedded in their minds like she and her dad that they cannot receive it hmm. well it is only god could change that i mean you see in the, at the end of the day it's only God could change you. You couldn't get anybody saved or anything as God. You could tell them about the things of God and then he'd leave the rest up to them. You know, we couldn't make somebody do things. You see, he gave us a will. And he's not going to violate that will because he says, not my wish that any should perish. If you insist that you want to perish, he'll leave you alone. But he'll give you his word. When you stand before him, he'll say, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. These words are forever set in heaven. Jesus is the word of God. So I'll go by the word. I mean, but uh, you didn't say, oh, are you in a fight with nobody? You just give them the word and uh, the rest is up to them. Amen. Thank just you just so keep, just keep praying for her. Thanks for calling. Bye. Amen. God bless you. Three four seven six six three eight six three eight. Ask the pastor. Pastor Randall 49 inside it. He called it the liars then. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go look at afternoon. Go ahead, Pastor. You're grace and peace, you're yeah, good, good, um, good afternoon, Grace and Peace, Pastor. Um, my question is the sign of the cross. What is the meaning and should a Christian perform the sign of the cross? Well, do you have Bible for it? Um, well, actually, I was reading Revelation 7, mm. um, verse 3. It says, Sin hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have filled the servants of our God in the foreheads. So, 
Well, that's well. No, no. After they do the sign of the cross, um, when we come towards the end time, we're going to have some sealing taking place. Satan, right. go, Satan, going to seal his people either in the forehead or the right hand, but God going to seal his people and the forehead. But it said nothing about uh -huh. making the sign of the cross there. If you look at that in in um, Revelation seven. He didn't say anything about that, you know. Anything you get, somebody tell you something, and then go to the Bible and say, could I have scriptures for this? Look at um, okay. look, look at Revelation 7. Always get to the Bible because sometimes you get off there, and all that could be the road to Jonestown, Guyana, Waco, Texas, and the Heaven Gate Cut, because we get out there and have not nobody bring the Bible and say, well, show me the Bible. If I should pay tithes, all right, fine, show me the Bible. If I should love one another, fine, show me the Bible. If I should go to church, fine, show me the Bible. Just so you always have something to stand on. So whether you're in Africa, you're in Asia, in the Caribbean, you have the Bible. Look at this in Revelation 7. Revelation chapter 7. And let's speak about verse 1. After these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, and the winds should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on the tree. And I saw another angel ascending out of these, having the seal of the living God, and cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom was given the earth, not the earth, or the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till I have sealed the servants of the of the God in their foreheads. And I heard the, I heard a number of them that were sealed. They were sealed a hundred and forty four and four thousand of the tribes of of Israel. And of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Out of the tribe of Reuben was sealed 12,000. Out of the tribe of God was sealed 12,000. Out of the tribe of Asa was sealed 12,000. Out of the tribe of Naphtali was sealed 12,000. Out of the tribe of Manasseh was sealed 12,000. Out of the tribe of Simeon was sealed 12,000. Out of the tribe of Levi was sealed 12,000. Out of the tribe of Asaka was sealed 12,000. Out of the tribe of Zebulun was sealed 12,000. Out of the tribe of Joseph was sealed 12,000. Out of the tribe of Benjamin was sealed 12,000. And this I behold, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hand, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation! to our God which sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the thrones and about the elders and the four beasts fell down before the throne and the faces and worshipped God saying Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. One of the elders answered and said unto me, What is these which are arrayed in white robes, and when come they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. He said unto me, These are they which are great tribulation, which have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Blood. Therefore they are before the throne of God, serving him day and night in the temple. And he sitteth on the throne and dwell upon them. And they shall hunger no more, neither shall they thirst, neither shall the sun light on them or any heat. And the Lamb which in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and they shall lead them to living fountains of water, and the God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. So I don't say anything about the Red Cross. Days. We're going to be sealed without marking our forehead. We're not about making okay. the sign of the cross. Amen? Oh, okay, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thanks for calling. Thank you. All okay, right. bye. Three four seven six six three eight six three eight. Happy New Year to you. What question you have today? Don't be shy. Don't be intimidated. You have a question from the Bible. Do you want to ask the pastor something? Three four seven six six three eight six three eight. Thirty minutes past three o'clock. Bless his name this evening. Three four seven six six three eight six three eight. Write it down. Don't be shy. Don't be intimidated. You have a question from the Bible. Something you don't quite understand, or you want you pick me up when I am somebody to explain something you, my you might have read three, four, seven. Seven six six three eight six three eight. Something else about um, 
and then what you know the cross anytime you see a man carrying a cross he's going to die somebody walking across you're going to die take up your cross and follow me mean die to yourself and that world and, and follow me anytime somebody walking across they're going to die amen hallelujah Three four seven six six three eight six three eight. Grace and peace, you're in the air. What's the question? Grace and peace, Pastor Fernando, Mr. Mr. Straker. How are you? I am great, thank God. I mm. want to ask you this question, Pastor Fernando. What do you think the people who are being being a Christian for all these years are not rooted and grounded in the things of the Lord? And also, I want to ask you, why are um, we not paying attention to like Matthew 5 and verse 20? For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So what's the question? Which is the first question? Pardon me? What's the question? Uh, what's the question? So ask the question again. Ask, what's the first question? Ask it. No, I was asking what you think is lacking, why the people aren't um, Christian for years. Yeah. So they are Christian, are not rooted in the things of the Lord. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, really, I don't, I don't know why they do that. But if you're born again, my experience is this. I, I mean, I, I'm learning all the time. I'm learning just like you, all of us is learning. Nobody know it all. We preface it by saying, you know, in part, prophesy in part. What happened many times, somebody would go genuine and get saved. They receive Christ as Lord and Savior. You get a, a new spirit, but you don't have a new body. And sometimes your, your body is still working and doing things that the world do because nobody's feeding the inside man. You're born again. I've never seen a person. This I'm, I'm learning. Never seen a person receive Christ and stay the same. Always a better person. Sometimes they could receive they, what they have with the Bible called a form of godliness. You know, they go to church all their life. Their grandmother was going. Their mother go to it. So they just joined the church. But it was never really saved. So they're doing all the things like the world. They walk. They talk like the world. And you couldn't tell the difference. But there should be a difference. If you are born again, any man in Christ is a new creature. All things are passed, behold, all things become new. And as far as this scripture here in Matthew 5 and verse 25, I say unto you, accept your righteousness, exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisee, you know why shall enter in the kingdom. Well, Jesus said about the Pharisee, this is a red late edition, he said about the Pharisee, they are the devil. He said, you cross land and see to make one proselyte, and when you make him even four time, more time a child of the devil than yourself. So he said, the Pharisee, they had him saved. Both of the major religion he did, the Pharisee, he had a lot of words to say about him. So he said, unless it's exceed that, but any man in Christ is a new creature. All things are past. You become the righteousness. But many times I observed through the years, I was part of a church out in Bushwick for many years. My wife and my children, I took them. They must hear my testimony about that many times. And I, you could, I, I could have sworn I was saved. I wasn't saved. I was a church person. I do all the church thing. I drive the bus. I take part in the Sunday school. I do a lot of stuff, but I wasn't saved. So a lot of people like that, they're doing a lot of church thing. They're a member of a church, but not a member of the body of Christ. So sometimes that could happen. So you can see them living that life all the time, contrary to things of God. But my advice to you is you follow Christ. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So you make sure you follow in Christ. So when that day come, you're caught up. Amen? Thank you. Thank you for calling. Happy New Year. Yes, thank you. Same to you. <coughs> Three four seven six six three eight six three eight. Eighteen minutes on the other side of the three. Choice Radio, your life, your salvation, your choice. Don't be shy, don't be intimidated. You have a question, ask the pastor. He say we see you a glass darkly. Three four seven six six three eight six three eight. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again. I bless your name. You are my only love. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my only love. Jesus, Lamb of God. 
This this scripture here, as the lady asked the question a while ago, and about unless your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, you cannot be saved. Well, this is a related edition from Matthew chapter 23. That's why I say follow Jesus Christ. Don't follow a man, follow Jesus Christ. Everything you do, get the Bible for it. You should love one another, fine. Give me the Bible. We should pay our tithes, fine. You should go to church, fine. Just show me the Bible. So wherever you go in the Caribbean, in Africa, in the, wherever I have the Bible to back it up. You see, here in Pharisee, in um, uh, Matthew 23, look at the 15 verse. One to you, scribes and Pharisee hypocrite, for you come past sea and land to make one proselyte. Hello. And when he's made, you made him two more full of child mm-hmm. of hell hold than yourself. Yes, grace go and ahead. peace. Grace and peace. Yeah, and yeah, Hello? Yes. Yes. Um, good afternoon and happy new year to you all. I'm busy, yeah. Yes. Um, my question is. Um, I notice when, you know, unsaved come to church and they testify, you know, they're saying that, you know, God answered their prayer. And, you know, I have a problem with that, you know, because, I mean, if you're a Christian and, um, you know, you pray, yes, God answer your prayer, but the unsaved coming in and saying the same thing. And if they're getting their prayer answered, then I, you know, I think that will keep them longer out there, you know, from coming because they're all there and they're praying and they're getting a prayer answered. So, you know, can I get scriptures to, you know, maybe, you know, tell them that, you know, they have to be saved for their prayer to be answered or what really, can you give me scriptures to back that up? Yes, I'm here. Um, I, 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 I don't get the question right. I mean, a, a person who is not saved, they said they, they ask for something and they get the, the prayer answer. That's what they say? Yes, yes. Well, <laughs> we have the, Satan is the God of this world and he'll accommodate a lot of people. But you not saved, you can't go to God. That, that's, that's not Bible. That's not Bible. The Bible, look at Big John uh, chapter 9. You go, remember, he's the God of this world. He'll supply a lot of stuff and make you feel that it's, 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 God, it's God doing it. <coughs> Big John chapter 9. But that, that's not Bible. I mean, that might be religion, that might be denomination and so on. You could not, a person who is not saved have to repent. A sinner could confess the sin if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just forgive us and so on. But a person who is not okay. saved is not, not in the Bible. I don't know, you know, you could talk to God, the God of this world. Your prayer could go up to the second heaven, not the third heaven. Uh, Big John chapter 9, look at verse 31. Big John, John chap- chapter 9, verse Big, 31. Yeah, verse 31. Look at that verse. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. If any man be a worshiper of God and do it his will, he heareth him. So if you're not, you can't get it. So I don't know, you know, we were out there in the world making a lot of noise. <laughs> there a lot of was an impression. Satan will accommodate you, make you feel all things all right. It's like some people going to these people with witchcraft to get some of the answers. They say, well, it must be working. Yeah, he'll accommodate you because in the ark of the supernatural, certain things could happen. When they went before um, Moses, when before Pharaoh, he threw his rod down and become a serpent. They throw the rod down and become a serpent. And one of the signs of the last, time, last days is Matthew 24. You should be careful because you, you get the prayer answer. We're saying a lot of things. Jesus was in the church, a girl possessed with an evil spirit to say, I know the Huda Wa, the Holy One of God. That's true. <laughs> but the source of it is not divine, it's devilish. You know, Paul with the girl of spirit of divination. These men are servants of the most high God, which shows they were salvation. What she's saying is true. But the source of it is not divine, it's devilish. Now here in Matthew 24, and look at the 24th verse. Put your finger at the 24th verse. You see, you could make uh, some noise and he accommodate you. Look at that 24th verse. For they shall arise false Christ and false prophet and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible to deceive the very elect. You see, not just signs, but great signs and wonders. If it were possible to deceive the very elect. That is Jesus Christ speaking the head of the church. He know the ending from the beginning. So you could make some noise out there and ask for certain things and they accommodate you. Out in that kingdom of darkness, we ask for certain things out there in their kingdom and they accommodate you to serve the kingdom of darkness. But a person who is not a Christian, you does not have any Bible for that. The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. And God hear it, not sinners. Okay? Right. Okay. Thank you for Thank calling. You. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Amen. bye-bye. Amen. That's a strong question. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, all of us been out there. All of us been there. 25 minutes on the other side of the three. Three four seven six six three eight six three. And ask the pastor. Grace and peace, and yeah, what's the question? Hey, Grace and peace, happy new year, pastor. Thank I just you, need to ask a question because on a Tuesday we have prayer meeting on a Tuesday, and I'm a little bit concerned because we have a lot of people that come to the church and that's for prayer and stuff. So the people that are looking for jobs, people that, and we have a lot of cards that people have sent in from all over the world with their prayer requests for me. And um, I know most of the people that come to church seeking for prayer, they are not Christians. Some of them are still sinners. When during when we are about, when they are about to pray for the card is handed out, so everyone receive a card with whatever the situation they need for that person is going through something. And if what what happens if there is someone that is not a, a Christian then because we have to join the men men goes together with men men pray together and the women pray the women pray together. They have to put the cards on each other and they pray for them. And I'm wondering, what if there is someone, because I mean, there's a lot of unsafe people there, what if they, you are joining with an unsafe person who is not safe? How do you, um, because you have to be on one card for, for the prayer to actually work. How does it work with 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 um with an unsafe person, you and an unsafe person praying over the cards and you, you doesn't know that the person is unsafe? How does it work with that? I, I, I don't know. I just want a little concern. Well, <laughs> if the person, well, who are they praying to? The people in your church or whoever praying for these people? Whoever they, whoever they praying, um, who of the people they pray people are? One well, of the first thing, God, if they're praying to God for that person, that's praying the person get a job or get healed or whatever it is. Well, when you look at the Syrophoenician woman come to Jesus, he said, I was not sent to you, but to the Lordship of the house of Israel. That's back then, you know. And he said, you can't take the churn bread and give it to dogs. So I mean, first, you have to get over on our side. And it's kind of strange, you know, people, like you don't work with a company, you come to get paid. You want the blessing of things of God, but you don't want to serve God. You know, God and mercy sometimes extended. We know that. And he's, I mean, he's God. He could do whatever he could well please. But sometimes, you know, we could be doing sometimes more damage than good sometimes when we do things like that. It's sort of aiding and abetting them to continue in their lifestyle that not is consistent with God. Remember many years ago, I prayed for a young man came from the island of Antigua. I have to answer all these things. We put some flesh on the bone, so to speak. And he would say Billy Graham came down to Antigua so many years, 20 years, 30 years ago, whatever, and prayed and he got saved in the crusade and so on. But then Billy Graham came back to the United States. He was only there for the crusade a week or so after the crusade. He came back to the United States. And now the young man down there now don't have a church to go to. Or he born again. The Bible says when an unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walked through dry places seeking rest and find none. He come back and find the house empty, sweep and garnish. He gone to get seven more spirit, more wicked himself. Come back to dwell in the last as it was in the first. So he left and he come back here and this evil spirit entered into him and he seen all sort of things, the door opening and all sort of crazy things and he come up to this country trying to get help all over the place and you know so it could be very dangerous sometimes you get people in that for no explain to them what it is now before a crusade come to town here into brooklyn or into the state of, or into the city of new york to do a crusade they should be under the auspices of a local church when that person gets saved they should be put in the uh, under the house uh, of that church from queens the bronx Staten island wherever the person is from put them there to be nurtured you just give birth to a baby and that baby have to be fed. So you come and you pray for the person and say, are you saved? No, you're not saved. Well, let's receive Christ. Christ and you lead them to Christ is genuinely saved. And what you're praying for, praying for a job, you pray for them and they go on back out. But the house is empty, sweep and garnish. And nobody is there to sort of give the baby milk and the door is wide open for the last day to be worse than the first. So that could, that kind of things could be, and I've seen that in time. I mean, I learn. I learn, you know. We had a, a facility that we house men, I mean, over 50,000 men in the process of time past your ministry. And you have to keep them inside there and teach them these things and let them know what you're playing with. You know, you could go out there, receive Christ and go back out in the road and you could, your worst day, your last day could be worse than your first. So people come into these kind of places and asking for prayer, for job and for things like that, fine. He said we should pray one for another, but yeah, there's, there's other parts of it, you know. There's other parts of it. So I would be very, very cautious to do that, you know, people come in and sometimes, you know, Things happen and they get a job, they get healed and things like that and they go on, they never come back to church and they leave the door wide open and sometimes you see them later on, they last it is worse than first. So I'll be very careful of that. Let them know what's at stake. You receive that, you give birth to this baby, this baby have to be fed. You have to be part of a church. Every sheep need to be shepherded. 
You have to find yourself part of a church. If you got out there, you don't have nobody to change your pamper, so to speak, and wipe behind your ears and brush your teeth because you're a baby, you can get yourself uh, in some sort of trouble. Sometimes they get a job, and we had all these kind of situations we had to deal with. Guy get a job, he's making a lot of money, he stopped coming to church, never come back because he have the money now and think he's, all he needs are met, never come back. Now, you know, they're serving the devil and never come back to things of God. So sometimes all this have to be explained. So by the leadership of the church should explain all these things to them. I hope I'm getting it across. <laughs> I've been through that. I've been through that. Led them to Christ. Once they get the wife, they get the husband, they stop coming to church. They get the job, they stop coming. And they're going out there. Nobody's feeding the baby and the baby dies spiritually. Amen. I remember when before I become a yeah before I was baptized and usually heard when I was younger that God doesn't answer sin a prayer and I and, and I, I grew up with that and, and realized that it's really God doesn't answer sin a prayer but you standing there praying for somebody for someone you are praying for someone to be healed or to get a job and then you don't know if the person you are praying holding the card with you is unsafe and it just it just bothered me I even though a pastor always tell them before that um, um, he told the visitors what is going to happen during the process of the prayer. He never um, like said um, if if they are unsaved, they shouldn't be. Um, which I don't think he. I don't know. He never mentioned a part of it. But it's concerned me a little to know that probably if you're not unsaved, how could you be praying over the card to someone who is? Who is well, it's, again, again, you you want to be partakers of each own bread. What what you do to get what you get? We are Christians. You working with a company? They have benefits, dental, maternity. They have sick leave. They have increased society. Or because you work with the company, these benefits you're entitled to. Now, somebody come from the outside and want to partake of the same benefits that they're not entitled to. Now, when you become a Christian, you are blessed with all spiritual blessing. That's part of it. That's one part of it. You're redeemed from the curse, spiritual death, poverty, you're redeemed because you receive Christ. You become a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. He was delivered for your offenses and raising all these are benefits you're entitled to. You're entitled to a long life, you're entitled to eternal life. When you're coming to these are benefits. So you explain to them this is the benefits you're entitled to. And if you don't do these things, you're like sometimes you know we have situations with people, you go to the doctor, you're having some sort of whatever it is, a migraine headache or whatever it is, you go you give you give you a prescription. You say take two of these three times a day for one month. You just take it for two days and you stop taking it and you might go ahead and come back because you stop taking it. You have to be, we have to tell or explain all this, have to be explained. Because you could be just, you're just, you're so in this, in a rush or so anxious to fill your church up with people, you'll do anything to let them, you know, just give them anything they want to hear say to them. No, no, no. Uh, you tell them the whole truth, nothing but the truth. <laughs> you're playing with eternal life. You're playing in the hands of the devil because when you are saved, you will be taken from the kingdom of darkness. He came of light. Satan don't like that because you were probably whatever you was doing for him before stealing, lying, prostituting, drug dealing, gangstering, or counterfeiting, money counterfeiting, whatever you were doing, you no longer did. He don't like that. He was evicted from his house. He called your body his house. And he's not he's not happy about that. So you could be playing in very dangerous hands if you don't explain this to the people. Amen. Thanks for calling. All right. 33 minutes on the other side of uh, 3 o'clock. Pastor Randall 49 is the first edition for the new year. Ask the pastor what's on your mind this evening concerning the Bible. If you have not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have some of your own opinions. Get some clarity for the new year that you can do it the right way. 347-663-8638. Jesus is Lord. Amen. 347 347- Six six three eight six three eight. Don't be shy. Don't be intimidated. You have a question for the pastor? Go ahead, ask him. Three four seven six six three eight six three eight. Four seven six six three eight six three eight. If you got a question, is now is your time. Three four seven six six three eight six three eight. 
write it down. You know, there, was a, there was a situation in the Old Covenant with um, the prophet Elisha, the son of Shaphat, that Jehoshaphat and Ahab joined together to defeat a common enemy. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, was very angry that his prophet, his king, Jehoshaphat, was aligning with, with Ahab, this ungodly king. Ahab was in charge of Israel, the capital is Samaria, and Jehoshaphat was in charge of Judah, the capital is Jerusalem, and he was very angry. And when they asked him about they wanted to find some solution to a problem they had and you know where to get water and so on. And Elisha's son was very angry. He said, Go to the go to the prophets of your mother and your father, don't come to us. And he was very angry. He said, If my king wasn't here, today, I wouldn't even look at you. And I mean he was so angry, he said, Call the ministerial to play. And as the ministerial play, the Spirit of God come upon him and he say, You wouldn't have no wind or, or rain, but you could have water tomorrow and so on. But you see, he didn't want to give him no answer to, to get him blessed. He was very angry that Jehoshaphat was aligned with Ahab. So go to the prophet of your mother and go to the prophet of your father. Don't come to us. And because his prophet was there, he answered the question, but he didn't want to do it. Grace and peace, you in the air. Grace and peace. All right, we lost that one. Give us again, 347-663-8638. Don't be shy. Don't be intimidated. You have a question. Go ahead and ask the pastor. 347-663-8638. Pastor Randall 49. 37 minutes on the other side of the 3 o'clock. We got a few more minutes in the segment. Get your question in. Three four seven six six three eight six three eight. Ask the pastor. You have a question from the Bible. Something you don't quite understand. Three four seven six six three eight six three eight. Four seven six six three eight six three eight. Grace and peace, you're in the air. Just what's the question? You're in the air. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. Okay, I have a question, and my question is based on Proverbs chapter three and verse nine. Proverbs it's about chapter three, verse nine. Honoring the Lord with the substance and with the first fruits of all that increase. Uh -huh. Could right. you explain first fruit for me, please? Well, let's go way back up into Genesis. When you look at Genesis with Cain and Abel, they say Abel bring the best thereof to Lord, and God was pleased with his. But Cain bring in the process of time. You know, that's like many of us were the way we were, bring nickels and dime whenever we come to church. That's not going to work. They say Abraham paid tithes of all. Well, tithes is ten percent of the top. So here. In this, um, Solomon gives credit for writing this book here. He was very rich, one of the richest king or richest man of his time. Honor thy Lord with thy substance, with the fruit of all thy increase. So shall thy barn be filled with plenty, and thy press shall burst out with new wine. So, so give to the Lord, or like you could look at Malachi 3 and verse 8. Um, bring all the tithes in the storehouse that we meet in my house, and prove me now here, which said the Lord of hosts, he will not open me the windows of heaven and pour your blessing in no room to receive it. So God require all that will be given his 10% belong to the Lord. And this is a commandment to give it. 
and you'll have people it depends on what persuasion you come from say well tithing is not for us today tithing is under the old covenant well tithing was before the, the, the law tithing was during the law and tithing, tithing was after law why because it works you see so honor the lord with thy substance and the first fruit of all that increase when the children of israel get they leave egypt and they went into Kadesh Barnea from there they crossed the uh, Jordan and they went into the promised land they tell them first the first of all the increase you'll give it to God and they've been doing that I mean they've been blessed so give honor the Lord thy God with the substance with the first root all thine increase and so shall thy barn be full of plenty and so on and this is a law if you look at the book of Leviticus they put it in the law it's a law it's a commandment for those under the law Leviticus 27 It worked for us and I, I can tell you this I mean without any going back in prayer and anything like that it worked for us throughout all the years we've been around we never had to go and beg anybody for anything we've been given all the toys and the turkeys I mean doing that for years never had to beg anything because we do what God said it work and we teach our people to work and all the people all of our people teach them to work it work for them look at Leviticus 27 and let's pick it up at verse 30. Honor the Lord with thy substance with the first fruit of all thine increase. It's a good time as the year begins. Take a big offering and sow it into the kingdom of God. Now, now something else. I have to be careful with sowing it now. Put my money where my name is at. God's name is not in every church. You could be putting your money in a bag with holes. So be careful where you put it. So just go and put it in anywhere and give it to this bishop and this apostle. Oh, you have to find out where God is at. How would I know? It is the honor of God to conceal a thing, the glory of to search it out. Alright, so you do it. Leviticus 27, look at verse 30. All the tithes of the land, whether it be seed of the land or the fruit of the seed, the, it is the Lord's. It's holy and it is the Lord's. With the prosperity that belong to the Lord's. Verse 31, if a man will at all redeem aught of the tithes, he shall add there to a fifth part thereof. In other words, if you don't pay a tithe on time, let's say you're supposed to pay a tithe every week, and you miss a week, you have to pay a penalty, a 20%, one fifth, you have to add to it. Now concerning the tithes of the herd and the flock, even whatsoever pass it under the rod, the tent shall be holy unto the Lord. He shall not search whether it be good or bad, neither shall he change it. And if he change it at all, both it and the change thereof shall be holy, it shall be not be redeemed. Look at verse 34. This is, these are the commandments with an S, which the Lord commanded Moses and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai. So honor the Lord with your first. Take out your first on top. Somebody said, or a well-known man said some years ago that you should pay your tithes of the net I disagree with that I should pay your tithes of the gross because Caesar and they take off from the gross the government take out from the gross to take out for your FICA and all the different things to take from the gross so if they could get off the gross you should take off the gross to give to God so let's say you're working for a hundred dollars a week and your tithes is ten dollars you take out ten dollars no matter what they take out of it what the government take out of it you should take out I, that's I disagree with that you should pay from your net you should pay from your gross I just me and I think that God will back me up on that when I get to heaven we'll discuss that further amen so honor the Lord I God with thy substance the first fruit of all and peace so shall thy barn be filled if your barn is not filled because you're not on the first fruit some people give some of it they give part of it and not all of it and that's why it's not working you see 14 ounces is not a pound you have to have 16 ounces for this scale to tilt thanks for calling um I okay um I'm aware of the, the tithes, okay? I understand the tithes with the 10%, but there are some churches, a lot of churches going around this first month in the year, they're asking you to bring a week's salary as a first fruit. No, no, no. I, I, I don't know where in the Bible no, 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 that's, it that's, is to back this up. So no. this is what, you know, it is very puzzling. No, that, that's, that, they don't have no Bible for that. That's up to you. You should give the first fruit of your increase. That's that's your salary that you work for your income not the coming. But for somebody to demand that you bring your salary, your first month salary, and put it in, that's up to you. You want to do that? Fine. You get a job and you say the first thing I'm going to give it to God because I went to God for this job and He blessed me this job and you tell whatever, whatever. And you that's between you and God. But for somebody to sort of make it a law that you should bring a whole salary the first, and I think that they don't have any Bible for that. 
don't have any buy for that. You entitled to pay ten percent, and that's it. Now, if you want to give more and offering, sometimes you could give more than that. Some people sell property and they pay their tithes and they give the church because they could sow into different things. And what you are giving it for? So maybe the daycare, maybe the seniors, maybe the after school program, maybe different things. You sow it in for different things, not just give it. You know, whatever you're interested. In. Maybe prison ministry, maybe hospital ministry, maybe um foreign ministry. So sowing into Haiti and into Africa, and what they're going through there in um, West Africa, in um, Liberia and Guinea and Syria Leon and you want to sow into that maybe your ministry or some ministry is doing a good job then you want to sow into that fine but for them to tell you bring your salary your first month and i don't think they don't have any bible for that that's that's crossing the macon county line <laughs> amen <laughs> thank you thank you for shedding light on that i know a lot of people is listening who are puzzled about this first yeah, and i'm glad that you cleared this yeah up. that's beside they, they cross the line that that's not that's between you and god you want to do that between you and god and you see, if your heart is not in it and you have to put you in it, it's not going to work. Because God love a cheerful giver, so you're giving not willingly. You know, somebody force you to give it, in other words, under a spiritual gun, so to speak, make it, it's not going to work. Amen? Thanks for calling. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The 46 minutes on the other side of the three. The spiritual gun. <laughs> 346. Four seven six six three eight six three eight. Don't be hey. shy, don't be intimidated, go ahead. I know person. over the over the years we never had to tell people to you know that that's uh, where things not working for them, so they want to sort of force people to bring in money and things like that, you know. But if you do what God tells you to do, you don't have to ever do that. We never, 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 25, 30 years, never had to tell people, put more money, give some more offering, dig deeper. Never, 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 never. Come on the radio and television and beg for money and send it. You do what's right, you do what God tells you to do, you'll always have money. All the needs will be met. Hallelujah. You know, things that are working for them, they run sometimes they're not even saved. Some of these people run each other, they're not even saved. And the things not working for them, so they're doing all these things and to raise money and they're they in this they're making merchandise of the people. That's what they do. The Bible talks about that in Peter. They're making merchandise of you. You know, they're there to make raise money for raising money for for year round, they're raising money. Let, let's look at that in the book of Peter, before somebody called Peter. Second Peter, they make merchandise of you. I didn't write it, I made it in the Bible. Second Peter. <coughs> Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter. Look at what it said here. It is a sign of the last time. We in the last days now. The last days started on the day of Pentecost. Second Peter chapter 2. But but there were false prophets also among the people, verse 1, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who shall privily bring in damnable heresy, even denying the Lord that bore them, and bring upon themselves strip destruction. Many shall follow the pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be even spoken up. Look at the third verse. True covetousness, they with feign words will make merchandise of you, who judgment every long time linger not, and whose damnation slumber not. They make merchandise of people. That's what they're yeah. there for. They keep yeah, raising you know. Pastor, I mean, this is something I find so, so strange. You know, sometimes people are so strong to cause their family and cuss out their neighbor and thing. And when it comes to certain things as eternal life, people just so lackadaisical yeah, yeah, with it. Yeah. Because you might be supporting ministries that you don't see them doing nothing at all. Mm. For the whole year, there is nothing concerning God that these people are doing to say, well, this is the paperwork for what we did, or this is the Bibles we give out, or that's where we went to preach, or that's what we did, that's what we sent to Haiti, that's what... Nothing and people sit right there and they acting like there's some kind of yeah. they they're under some kind of spell. You yeah. know what I mean? And God is not gonna God is not gonna I mean people will be surprised. God is not gonna support that kind of attitude. Yeah. Because the Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. If these people are not really doing ministry, how dare you sit down year after year and support these people and you don't even want to ask a question? Well, where is my money going? What are you guys doing? Da 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 da. And some people make you feel don't ask me that. You can ask me no question like that. Or you could ask that. You I think know. it's sacrilege just to ask a question. No, if I if I support in this ministry, whether it's prison or hospital or senior, whatever whatever the thing is, because different ministries support different things. Some is big in the prison. Some is big in after school programs. Some is big in education generally. Some is big in homeless. Uh, whatever whatever your thing is, you know, you may support that. That's what. Or, you know, that's why you want to see the mission statement. What is what what's it about? What what did, what's the mission of this organization? And you may not like some of the things, or you may like like what they're doing so you support it and you see you know if it's cool whatever it is whatever you think is foreign affair maybe in haiti maybe in africa different parts of the caribbean or whatever but you know you want to see where your money going 
You want to put your money, in, don't want to put it in a bag with holes. You want to see some results, you want to see lives change, you want to see things happening and the community being affected where you are. You've been there, some of these places, my wife and I passed some of these places. I mean, we pass, I mean, amazed. These buildings close up all the time. I say, well, when do they open this building? This wonderful piece of real estate just sitting there. They could have a senior program, they could have a, 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 a feeding program, a senior adult daycare, they could have a, after school, they could have computer, they could do all kinds of stuff. Look at every building, have about a dozen of my still my wife. Look at this building. When do they open this building? I mean, all the time it's just like a jail, just shut up there tight and nobody's Until you know, Sunday. The, yeah, it's in Sunday and then they open it like a jail, close it down, close it right back, open the door, close it right back. Something else. I'm telling yeah. you. Amen. Hallelujah. Ten more minutes to the top of the hour. Three four seven six six three eight six three eight. As you 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 take your um you so 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 to speak you 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 take take notes of what happens in twenty fourteen and you make sure you're projecting this year twenty fifteen serious about the things of God and making ways for Christ this year. Because this morning we were asking the people to um you know call and what you have accomplished for twenty fourteen for Christ. At least, well, we had one caller, so I guess we had one. We have we have two callers. <laughs> we have one from your from Helping Hands call and another caller. So I guess we have two churches in the whole of Brooklyn. <laughs> you understand me? And I thought the phone was going to be totally filled up with call people calling and so proud of what their ministry have done during 2014. And oh, they're so happy of all the souls that was transformed for Jesus. And oh, they're so proud of their bishop and their apostle, what they have done, and so many lives was touched and changed for Christ. And the phone was here. Yeah, I wonder. I was trying to figure. If the phone was working after a while, I tried to say, I wonder if, they, if I pay the bill or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I think that was the time the phone should be so over full with all the callers with the different churches that they go to. At least 2014, you're giving us a record of what has been done by your church and, you know, how proud you are of your bishop and your pastor and all the monies they have allocated for this and that for the honor of God and how many people they have prayed for, how many places they have went to pray and how many home visits and you know i i i <laughs> and you know people are gonna go back this year and do the same thing all over again i'm telling you man it's amazing but we just thank god for his truth his word is truth yeah. amen eight more minutes to the top of the hour if you're out there in radio land don't be shy don't be intimidating spellbong and hellbong spellbong and hellbong you know long <laughs> i don't remember that that's the state of heaven three four seven six six three eight six three eight eternal life is not something to play with Three four seven six six three eight six three eight. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my only love. Spell bong and hell bong. Don't think that these people are not ashamed to put spells on you guys to keep you where they they want to keep you. You want to know why you can't move? You think they're joking? You think mankind easy? People who are not saved, they will do anything to keep you, trust me. They dabble with everything to keep you. Your eyes are bound. 347-663-8638. Seven more minutes to the top of the hour. Get them into my beautiful wife. Three four seven six six three eight six three eight. We had no, we had no men call. Only women call. <laughs> Didn't you mind? No men call. Hey, all right. Only women call. Three four seven six six three eight six three eight. If you have the men out there, if you have a question this afternoon. Feel free to call and ask the pastor. Don't be shy, don't be intimidated. The glory of God to conceal a thing. The honor of kings. Turn off your radio caller. Grace and peace, you're in the air. Question. Grace and peace, you're in the air. Um, regarding the premise, and it says in Proverbs 3, verse 9, to honor the Lord with your health, with the first fruit of your crops, 
then your barn will be filled to overflowing and your bride will bring over with new wine. What's the question? The question is, you say, um, the first um, paycheck to give to your church is not a Bible, is not in the Bible. Who said it was in the Bible? You have a Bible for that? You say give the first, all right, if you look at the book of Malachi, now, if you look at that scripture, look, look at look at Proverbs first. Look at Proverbs three. I'm talking about Proverbs Proverbs three verse yeah, nine. Yeah, I know. Probably we read it a while ago. Proverbs chapter three. Look at Proverbs three. Um. Proverbs three, and verse nine. Two parts of it is both nine and ten. Honor thy Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruit of all thine increase. So shall thy barn be full of plenty, and thy press shall burst up with new wine. Now when you look at Malachi, it seems you're getting the same result here with Malachi. Malachi 3. <coughs> uh, now let's, let's speak about verse 8. Look, keep your marker there in 3 and 9 and 10, you're about to full of and burst up with new wine. Malachi 3 and verse 8. Will a man rob God, yet you have robbed me? But you say, saying, when have we robbed thee in tithes and offering? You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me even the whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes in the storehouse, that we meet in my house, and prove me now here with said the Lord of hosts, if I not open you the windows of heaven, and pour your blessing shall not be enough room to receive it. It seems like you get the same result here as you get when you paid in um, Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. Look at verse 10. Bring you all well, the tithes. What I'm understanding... Proverbs uh, 3 is talking about the first fruit and the other one talking about the tenth. Yeah, well, this is, well, look, you, what you get if you put the first fruit, 10% of the first fruit in, 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 in Proverbs. Look, look at it, Proverbs 3 and verse 9 and 10. Proverbs chapter 3. Honor thy Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. So that's your salary, whatever you gain, you increase on in that. So shall thy barn be full of plenty and wine full, and full of new wine. Now, when you look at Proverbs and when you look at Malachi, Bring all the tithes, bring all the ten percent into the saw that we meet in my house. And prove me now here it said the Lord of hosts, if I not open me the windows of heaven and pour your blessing shall not be enough room to receive it. It seemed like here you get more because you don't have room to receive it. The last time God opened the windows of heaven, the entire planet was covered with water. So he go, you bring to ten percent, you're gonna cover with everything here covered. And I'll rebuke the devourer, so the devil will not mess with your money, your health, and your family Lord. I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake, and you shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. All nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. So both of them saying the same things. Both of them give the first fruit of it, give the first part of it, is that you take a whole salary. Some people just bent on what you want to do. It's your money, do whatever good well please. You don't have any Bible for you taking your entire salary and giving to anybody. You don't have no Bible. If you want to do that, God bless you, go ahead. More you give, more you receive. He that sows sparingly, going to receive sparingly. He that bountifully, going to receive bountifully. If God put it in your heart to do it, go ahead. But to sort of mandate it, so you better bring your entire salary here. I want to see your pay stubs. I want to see your tax return. You bring entire salary here to me or else you're in violation. You don't have no B-I-B-L-E for that. Now this year, you honor the Lord thy God with thy substance and with the fourth fruit of all thine increase. So all you may be getting some stocks and bonds and, and dividends, some other things, interests and things like that. You pay 10% of all <laughs> your things like that. You might be running a susu or whatever it is you get from that. You give 10% of all that. That's what he's saying. So shall thy barn be full of plenty and thy press shall burst out with new wine. Now here, when you give Malachi, you give 10, he's going to open the windows of heaven and put up in it. So I don't know which is you're the same you're giving here. You have the windows of heaven. You don't have room to receive it. Amen. Pastor, I, I, um, I call let me say this to you. That's why the Bible says we should rightly divide the word of truth. The, the Bible is, is saying here, as we honor God with thy substance and with the first fruits of thy increase, it means an increase, as what Pastor rightfully said. If you have something that you get involved in as an increase in what you previously received or your previous business or undertakings, and you have an increase, you give him of the increase also. So that's what he's saying. He's saying to give them the first of your every month you work. You are, if you're already working, you should be paying tithes or giving from your, from your substance, which is what you already get. 
But if you have an increase in whatever but you're usually, doing... But usually at the end of the year, you get bonuses. Right, and you get yes, things like course. that, And your stocks and bonds and all this kind of stuff. So you give 10% of all that. and wherever increase, you increase, yes. Yeah, you, you do that. But um, to mandate, bring your salary, your pay stuff, I don't, you cross the line. That's, that's, that's nobody's business. Between you and God. You say, he that give privately, God going to reward openly. openly. Hallelujah. You see, people who give openly and make that kind of statement, you're not blessed. That's your reward. You want Hallelujah. people to know what you're giving. That's between you and God. That's something inside of your heart, between you and God. Nobody would ever know what I give to the ministry. And they would never know until you get to heaven and you look at my record and you'll see. But nobody would know what I give. A thousand dollars, I give a million dollars, I give one penny. Nobody would never know that. That's between you and God. Amen. Thanks for calling. Amen. Thank you, caller. God bless you. <laughs> indeed we have come to the top of the four o'clock indeed and that's a, a great um conversation there and the, the bible is very clear pastor it says you know it from the first fruits of thine increase it means if you have an increase you also acknowledge god in the increase and not only that usually mm -hmm. yearly you get an increase in salary yes of course you increase your of salary course. you was getting a thousand or they give you fifteen hundred dollars so the all that you add to that and so on so you get your stocks and bonds and some people run different things and the end of the year they pay all the dividends and you know, those of us caribbean folks the susu and all that <laughs> and whatever they call it and and again it's, it's clear it said the substance of the increase yeah. he didn't say it to, to give him the increase or to give him all of what you have give the, give him from the substance and give him you know um the, from the increase so it's it's very but clear if, if god bless you and they're doing a wonderful work they might be doing this as i said before they might be let's say they're going to start a daycare center and they want the reason way to start the daycare they have to hire professional people and then and you want to sow into that fine you know you look like an and sapphira you know people was coming and they're putting the money in and so on and the money say you want to do that fine nobody stop you and do that but to mandate it say so you have to bring your entire salary and things like that. No, I don't think you're talking about and, that. And Pastor, what is the biggest confusion about this, if we look about it, if we do a survey into those ministries that project that kind of ministry mm -hmm. and find out what are you doing? Mm -hmm. What are you doing for Jesus? Let me see your, your paperwork mm -hmm. for the year of your achievement or your projections mm -hmm. for the year. Let's see what you have what you have done or what you do. Let's see. Give us paperwork. Show us what you've done. Well, let me tell you, Satan, I've got well organized. They have paperwork to approve. They have paperwork to do that things so I was done in the moon and time was done in Africa. <laughs> they have paperwork to show you. Oh, yes. yeah, oh, yeah. So, you see, all have to be a hard thing. What's in your heart? But they have all that put together. They have these people working there, putting all that to show you all kind of thing that you don't understand what it is. And you only could hear about it, you don't see it. They have that all well organized. It has to be from your heart. You have to be a place where you feel comfortable. If you don't feel comfortable about it, you no, but if you don't feel comfortable about what they do, you, you shouldn't be there. But you have to feel comfortable that you see God say that you should put it where my name is at. So I had to make sure God's name is there before you Amen. start going to. See, they could talk a good talk, walk a good talk. You see, they're doing a lot of stuff. But is God's name there? You see, put my money where my name is at. My name is not. Don't put it there. You see, you talk about the church of Corinth. That is the church of God that is at current. All the church of Corinth is not of God. The church of Galatia that is of God. Every church at Galatia is not of God. The church at Ephesus that is of God. Every church in Ephesus is not of God. So I found which church and put his money there. Amen. And and the young lady have called about the, the Sabbath day and the worship. Mm. I mean, the, the most important thing for a believer to understand that they are bearing fruits for the kingdom. Mm. And Matthew 9, Matthew 9, 17 speak about, you know, the, the old, the new wine in the old wine skin. Yeah. You know, putting new wine in old wine skin. But at the end of the day, are we truly born again? Are we really Christians? Are we, if we fighting to do this day and do this day, are we really Christians? Am I seeing fruits in that person's life that they have really received but Jesus? All these, all these are tricks of the devil to get you off Jesus Christ. He asked them about the day and the day. All they talk about day to day, Jesus is not mentioned. You see, get you away from it. Talk about that, you know, the time we worship, the day we worship, Jesus Christ is not mentioned. You never hear the cast of the devil in the name of the Sabbath. Come out. In the name of the Sabbath, you be, you, you're saved. In the name of the Sabbath, be baptized. No. You see, all is to get away from Jesus Christ. Talk about everything else. Talk about this and talk about that and this. And talk about everything else to get away from Jesus Christ. That's the, that's the key. You see, no Jesus is mentioned. They argue and fight over the Sabbath and the Sabbath and the Sabbath. But nobody say, whosoever call upon the name of the Sabbath shall be saved. Whosoever in the name of the Sabbath come out. Hallelujah. Lay hands on you in the name of the Sabbath. You see, just get away from things of God. Things that they're making a big ado about later on when you arrive on the other side, you say, that was important. 
That was important. You should be a Christian. You, your Sabbath should be every day, wherever you are, on the train, on your job, on your work. You should be your life. It should be a tale that has been told. You know, Thank and you sometimes Jesus. you could minister more by your conversation, which is your lifestyle, but then but your Sabbath and, your, and things like that. You should stay on Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have come to the conclusion and we want to thank every caller who have called. And, and let me let you understand that Choice Radio is not about religion, projecting one religion over another religion. Even if we worship on a certain day, whatever we do, we are not trying to bring down uh, you know you your belief and whatever we just want to grow strong in jesus we want to just do for jesus that people in darkness will see the light of christ in us that we can project the gospel of jesus christ amen so whatever your persuasion is make sure that when you're listening you listen with your heart and know that what we represent and represent the word of god and what we're saying can be validated in the scriptures and and the bible asks us to rightly divide the word of god amen if if you rightly divide the word of god the lady of call about this the, the scripture is telling you very clearly you give from your increase okay if there is an, an an increase in anything you're doing then you make sure you represent god in your giving that you, god is a part of it so you are letting god know that Whatever you increase me in, I'm paying you back. I'm acknowledging you. So whatever your increase, increase is an increase. It's, a, it's something new. Increase is not your regular everyday thing. Every day you walk, you walk. That's your normal pay. So you give him from your substance, which is your normal everyday receiving. But when you have an increase, you don't forget God in the increase. You let him be a part of your increase. But your normal everyday walking is not an increase. It's just your normal everyday pay. Yeah. Every weekly pay is just your normal stuff. So you deal with it the normal way. Yeah, and sometimes you get another job. You have two jobs. You have one job. You're working from home on the computer. You have your regular job. So the increase you get from that, you know. You acknowledge it. But the thing is, you could be blessed if if you want God put it in your heart to bless the church or to bless the pastor or whatever it is, and you'll be blessed. But that's something in your heart. That's that's how to come from your heart. People, I mean, we do things. I mean, it come from inside. So when you miss it, you didn't do the right thing the right way. And yeah, but you're learning all the time because we preface it by saying we know in part, we prophesy in part, we see through a glass darkly. We don't know it all. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to give those of you the salvation prayer. Of course. We don't know if anybody out there have been listening for the first time. You never know. There are always new people listening and, um, and communicating with this station some way. We want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus. You start here. This is the right way to start here. Start on the right side, not the wrong side. You start on the right side, you go end on the right side. We talk about at the church. If you start but the shirt wrong, you're going to end wrong. Start but the right, you're going to end right. So we want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. The greatest thing you can do for your loved one, for your mother, for your father, your brother, your sister, your aunts, your uncles, and all those. I've never seen. I mean, I'm learning. I say I'm learning all the time. I'm open to learn. I make a mistake. I'm a <laughs> correct mm -hmm. myself. I'll somebody correct me. I accept it. You know, I've never seen a person receive Christ and become a worse person. Always a better person who received Christ. Not who said they received Christ, but who received Christ. They become a better person, a better father, better mother, better son, better daughter, better employer, better employee because they receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. So we want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. If you're not saved, then it's for yourself. But if you're already saved, you can stand proxy for somebody who is not saved. Repeat these words I mean from the bottom of your heart. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. You said in your holy word. You said in your holy word. Whosoever come to me. Whosoever come to me. I'll in no way cast out. I'll in no way cast out. But I'll take them in. But I'll take them in. So I come to you. So I come to you. You didn't cast me out. You didn't cast me out. But you took me in. But you took me in. And I thank you. And I thank you. Romans 10. Romans 10. Verse 13. Verse 13. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Shall be saved. So I call upon your name. So I call upon your name. So I'm now saved. So I'm now saved. Romans ten. Romans ten. Verses nine and ten. Verses nine and ten. With a mouth confession is made unto salvation. With a mouth confession is made unto salvation. But with a heart man believe it unto righteousness. But with a heart man believe it unto righteousness. So I confess with my mouth. So I confess with my mouth. The Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. That He died. That He died. Went to hell. Went to hell. Spent three days. Spent three days. And three nights. And three nights. Just for me. Just for me. Because I confess that with my mouth. Because I confess that with my mouth. And I believe that in my heart. And I believe that in my heart. I'm now saved. I'm now saved. I now become. I now become. The righteousness. The righteousness. Of God. Of God. In Christ. In Christ. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. 521. 521. Jesus. Jesus. You represent me in heaven. You represent me in heaven. And I will. And I will. Represent you on earth. 
represent you or not. Jesus. Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For what you did for me. For what you did for me. On Calvary. On Calvary. Shedding your blood. Shedding your blood. To redeem me. To redeem me. From the curse of the law. From the curse of the law. Spiritual death. Spiritual death. Poverty. Poverty. And sickness. And sickness. Satan. Satan. You no longer my you Lord. You no longer my Lord. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Is my Lord. Is my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. I live for him. I live for him. I'll serve him. I'll serve him. I'll study his words. I'll study his words. I'll be a good example. I'll be a good example. For all to see. For all to see. And I thank you. And I thank you. In your name I pray. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Glory Amen. to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you receive Christ as Lord and Savior, Christianity is not passive but active. The Bible says when an unclean spirit has gone out for man, you walk it through dry places seeking rest and find and he's coming back. You come back and find the house empty, sweep and garnish. You go and get seven more spirit, more wicked himself. Come back to dwell in your last is worse than first. You need to start reading your Bible. Don't give no place to the devil. Make sure when he come back to visit, all the seats are taken. Start reading your Bible. We want to suggest to you start with the gospel according to John. Start with the first chapter. Read in the morning. You can at lunchtime and you can at bedtime. Take your time and read it. Tomorrow you read chapter two. And you do the same thing in chapter three and so on. As you keep reading, the Spirit of God will lead you to different places, maybe to the book of Proverbs, maybe to the book of Psalms, maybe to the book of Acts. I don't know where he leads. It depends on where you are spiritually. But keep reading and so on. Ask God to lead you to a church that will feed you spiritually. Don't go to a church because your friends go in there because there's a church down the block or across the street or where you live. That may be so, but that may not be so. Ask him to lead you there when you go to submit to the authority. Let me say this to you. Whatever church you go, they're going to have some disagreement. Because everybody is not perfect in the church. Everybody is not in fifth grade spiritually. Some people in first grade, some in second grade, some in third grade. So everybody don't see things the same way. So we want you to go there and you submit that authority. Be a blessing to them and God going to bless you as you do these things. Amen. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, this privilege that you've given us. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who make all this possible. Thank you for the victory, triumphant and victorious Jesus. We give you all the praise, all the honor and all the glory because all belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory amen. to God. Amen.
Hallelujah. I want to definitely thank you guys. Amen. Drink from the cup in-